Hello, I'm David Clark from the Department of Journalism, Sheffield Hallam University. I'm the consultant to the National Archives for the ongoing release of the Ministry of Defence's UFO files. This is the fourth instalment of files transferred from the MOD. They are available to download from the National Archives dedicated website, nationalarchives.gov.uk forward slash UFOs. There are 14 files in all. They contain just over 4,000 pages of material spanning 15 years between 1981 and 1996. Amongst the collection are detailed files covering specific UFO reports. There are files on UFO correspondence, and there is also a file on parliamentary questions and inquiries. The series of files covering UFO reports cover the period between January 1993 and August 1996. During these three years, there were more than 800 separate sightings reported to the Ministry of Defence, with a large increase in numbers during 1996, when a total of 609 sightings were logged. This was more than all the three previous years added together, and in fact was the largest number on record since 1959. The large increase in numbers reported during 1996 may reflect increased public awareness of UFOs and aliens due to the popularity of the TV series The X-Files, which was showing on British TV at the time, and the release of the movie Independence Day. Two of the most interesting files in this release concern the Rendlesham incident that took place in Suffolk in December 1980. Rendlesham is undoubtedly Britain's best-known UFO incident, and it has become known as Britain's Roswell. The sighting involves mysterious lights that were seen in the forest outside the perimeter fence at RAF Woodbridge in Suffolk during the Christmas holidays of 1980. These were seen by American airmen who were stationed at the base. They claimed they had seen a UFO landing in the forest, and they went to investigate and found traces on the trees, on the ground, and also mysterious radiation readings. A summary of these events was written up in January 1981 in a famous memo that was sent to the Ministry of Defence by Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt, who was the American Deputy Base Commander. Holt himself had actually seen one of these UFOs in the forest. Now Holt's memo opens one of these files, and this then largely consists of correspondence between the Ministry and members of the public who wrote in about the case between 1983 and 1995. The file also shows that the MOD were unable to explain this incident, but they decided it was of no defence significance, mainly because no unidentified objects had been detected on radar at the time. A second file contains the MOD's final position statement on the Rendlesham incident. This was written for the Defence Minister, Lord David Trefgarn, in 1995. It says, We think it's highly unlikely that any violation of UK airspace would be heralded by such a display of lights. I think it equally unlikely that any reconnaissance or spying activity would be announced in this way. But Lord Hill Norton, who was a former Chief of Defence Staff, was unconvinced by the official statements on the case. He believed the Rendlesham Forest UFO incident was a potential banana skin looming for the MOD. In a letter he wrote to the Defence Minister Michael Heseltine in 1985, he said, If the USAF report is accurate, there is evidence that British airspace and territory are vulnerable to unwarranted intrusion to a disturbing degree. If, on the other hand, Colonel Holt's report must be dismissed, then we have evidence, no less disturbing I suggest, that a sizeable number of USAF personnel at an important base in British territory are capable of serious misperception, the consequences of which might be grave in military terms. Responding to another letter about the incident, Michael Heseltine said, I can assure you there is not a grain of truth in the allegation that there has been a cover-up about alleged UFO sightings, including Rendlesham. Another important UFO story covered by these files is the wave of sightings that happened in Belgium during 1989 and 1990. The MOD papers reveal how in March 1990 the Belgian Air Force received many reports of brightly lit triangular shaped flying objects. These had been seen late at night by police officers and many other witnesses. Unidentified objects were also seen by NATO radars around the same time and this led the Air Force to scramble F-16 fighters to intercept them. 
In a statement sent to the British Ministry of Defence in June 1994, General Wilfred de Brewer, Chief of Operations at the Belgian Air Staff, confirmed that F-16 pilots had obtained lock-ons with their airborne radars, but were unable to explain what had caused these phenomena. The Ministry of Defence were not informed of the incident at the time, and it was concluded that there was no threat to the British Isles. In 1993, they told the correspondent, we have never detected a structured craft flying in UK airspace that has remained unidentified. The UFO report files for 1993 and 1994 contain many sightings and accounts of sightings of a brightly illuminated oval object that was seen over London and many other parts of southern England. The MOD looked into these sightings and they discovered that most of them had been caused by an advertising airship that was launching the Ford Mondeo. The airship was even seen by the Ministry of Defence's UFO desk officer at the time. The files contain many accounts and sketches of these UFOs, and some of the drawings depict saucer-shaped UFOs similar to those that can be seen in 1950s science fiction movies like The Day the Earth Stood Still. There's also quite an interesting account from a lady in Harrow, Middlesex, who was driving home one night with her 13-year-old daughter, and they both saw a mysterious circular object brightly lit hovering over the road. The mum's account says that first she thought it was a plane, then she thought it was the airship, but she'd seen the airship before, and then she described it as being a spacecraft. And she says in her account that she felt so calm and lovely, I just wanted to follow it. One entire file is devoted to a flap of UFO sightings over the south and midlands of England that happened in the early hours of the 30th and the 31st of March 1993. Bright lights were seen by police officers and military witnesses, including a police patrol at RAF Cosford near Wolverhampton. As a result of that sighting, this incident has become known as the Cosford Incident. In fact, during a six-hour period that night, there were between 20 and 30 sightings reported to the Ministry of Defence across the south and west of the British Isles. On receiving these uh, incidents, the Ministry of Defence's UFO desk became so concerned that they asked the RAF to replay the radar tapes for that particular night. When they looked again at these radar tapes, they found that nothing unusual had been detected. And soon afterwards, it emerged that the majority of the sightings had been caused by the re-entry into Earth's atmosphere of a Russian rocket that had launched a Cosmos satellite into orbit. So, at the end of the day, this was one UFO that eventually became an IFO. That's an identified flying object. One of the strangest UFO stories in these files was an attempted abduction by aliens reported to the Ministry of Defence by police in Staffordshire. What occurred is best described in the police statement sent to the Ministry of Defence, which follows. Both youths tried to convey what had allegedly happened to them. They stated that whilst walking up the Rougely Road, they had both experienced an intense heat. Their skin turned a glowing red. They then stated that they saw a darkish silver inverted saucer-shaped object in a field, which was glowing red beneath. The object was about four houses high in the sky, and about 40 foot away from them. They then, reluctantly, went on to state that a voice which came from a lemon-like head, which appeared beneath the machine, said, We want you, come with us. Both appeared upset and shocked, and as it was increasingly difficult to obtain detailed information from them, they were told to go home and write an account of what they thought they had experienced. A couple of days later, the police returned to the field where the UFO was said to have landed. All they could find was a farmer who was spraying his crops. He said he'd seen nothing unusual. Another very weird UFO was reported to the Ministry of Defence by Cheshire Police during July 1996. This is one of the few cases where there appears to be some form of physical evidence left at the scene by an unidentified flying object. A report sent to the MOD describes how a young man was returning home late one night when he saw a strange light hovering above a cemetery near Widnes in Cheshire. As he watched, he saw beams of light projected onto the ground and reported hearing a scary noise like cats wailing. He also saw smoke rising from the spot where the beams of light struck the ground. He returned home and told his father about what he'd seen. His father contacted the police and a police car was sent to the scene. 
A statement by the police officer said that when he arrived at the scene, he found a hole burned in a railway sleeper in the cemetery that was still smouldering. The files also contain information on the Bonnybridge UFO flap in Scotland. Bonnybridge is a small town between Glasgow and Edinburgh that often featured in the national press during 1994 and 1995 as Britain's hotspot for UFO sightings. It was claimed that there had been more than 3,000 separate reports from that area. In 1995, a local councillor wrote to the then Prime Minister, John Major, asking for an inquiry into the sightings, and he later tried to twin the town with Roswell in New Mexico. All 14 files can be downloaded from the National Archives website, which is nationalarchives.gov.uk forward slash UFOs. <laughs>